Mahaga Yujet, Sakskarde, what gay ni e ganyaka haka, ni one jodu, what can oradun than as a wigwego. My name is Gahandi Horn Miller, and I'm Ganyaka Haga from the community of Gahnawage. I'm an associate professor in the School of Indigenous and Canadian Studies at Carleton University. Hi, my name is Ali Davidson. I'm an EdTech Development Coordinator in Teaching and Learning Services at Carleton University, and I support the project that uh, we're going to be talking about today. So today we're going to be talking about the Collaborative Indigenous Learning Bundles. Now this isn't, uh, this is our own initiative in response to the Truth and Reconciliation Commission and uh, in terms of bringing Indigenous content into the classroom. And we're sharing it with you today so that you can find inspiration for starting your own initiatives at your own institutions. Now what this uh, project is about is renewing a relationship uh, that came out of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. As you know, the residential schools were a way that our, our people, Indigenous peoples, were colonized. And so we have an opportunity to change that, to change that history and begin to think ahead in terms of how do we bring Indigenous knowledge and content into our classrooms so that the students learn and can move forward in a meaningful way. The, in December 2015, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission released their final report, and in it were 94 calls to action. The most important part for us was the call to uh, all post-secondary institutions to bring Indigenous content into the classrooms. And so this is Carleton University's part of their move towards conciliation. Other universities have done it a little bit differently, where they've initiated core Indigenous Studies courses where all incoming undergraduate students have to take them. There's issues with that um, that we're finding out, namely the lack of uh, staff to teach in those courses, as well as finding relevance, students finding relevance for the content of Indigenous knowledge and in re its relationship to the program of study that they've decided to enter into at their university. Other universities as well have chosen to initiate large-scale online courses, which are more individual led. There is little community engagement and the students of those courses are asked to guide, it's a self-guided essentially. And of course, we're doing it differently. So what's important about our project is the issue of collaboration. Now, this project in its use of and, and bringing Indigenous content into the classrooms centers on this idea of building a community around not only making the bundles, but also bringing that knowledge into the classroom. And as well afterwards, what happens when other, um, when there's a, a need to share how that went in each classroom. So this whole project is centered on this idea of collaboration. As well, it's the idea of, and what makes it different from other institutions and what they've chosen to do is that the content, the Indigenous content becomes relevant to multiple disciplines. So it begins to be applied across disciplines. And so the students find relevance to their area of study. As well, and probably the most important part of this is in how these bundles are structured, um, facilitates the I and, and, and works on the idea that these bundles are alive. These bundles contain knowledge that is still living. It's still shared. It's orally transmitted. And so, um, you know, it makes this knowledge alive and living and um, students are able to engage with it in that way. I'd like to point out the dish with one spoon graphic and the term bundle as a way to characterize and show you what kind of relevance this has to this overall project. The wampum that you see on your left is called a dish with one spoon, and it symbolizes the uh, collective use of the natural resources. So when my people would travel, have to travel through another nation's territory, they would establish an agreement and a relationship based on the need to put down any weapons of war, there would be no violence and we would ask to share in the natural resources that were available. So we would collect, we would um, gather, we would hunt, and we would, uh, we would be allowed to engage, uh, use and draw on the natural resources of the territory so that we could survive as we traveled through. 
So what, how this relates to um, this project itself is that this represents a, um, a bowl and the collective knowledge that the collaborators and the knowledge keepers have shared with us and ultimately are shared in the classroom are placed into this bowl. And so we all draw from it as a, as a bundle of knowledge, as a, a shared bundle and a shared bowl of knowledge. And so this is what that represents. The bundle in its use of a, the, the Indigenous Knowledge Keeper portion as well draws on this idea of Jini Jiwan, uh, which is a, a Ganyageha or a Mohawk word for understanding history and what, what our engagement with history is, which is about sharing knowledge in a way that makes it alive in the minds of the students and the minds of the people. So you know, all in all, these pro this project um, ensures that that lived aspect of all the knowledge is kept um, and, and reinvigorated. As well, another important aspect of this project is that it is Indigenous led. So in my own expertise and my own experience and my own community ties, I've drawn on um, my communal relationships and academic relationships to ask uh, community Indigenous experts and academic experts to share their knowledge and work with us as collaborators on the core part, one of the core parts of each bundle. Um, as well, the knowledge keepers, and as I said before, what they do is they bring that knowledge alive. So these are community people that um, share their stories and share how they um, might engage with these different issues that are brought forward in the uh, lecture portion of the bundle. And as well, the readings that we provide uh, are done by Indigenous academics. And so um, those who engage with the bundles in their classes and use them feel confident that the sources that we've provided are ones that are acceptable. So each bundle contains a 40 minute lecture um, and a 30 minute interview with a knowledge keeper. As well, we have suggested resources. So um, these are the ones, the, the readings and whatnot, the websites and things that um, those who, those collaborators have used in their own courses know that they're effective in transmitting um, the kind of uh, information that is needed. As well, we have a, a series of suggested activities so that those who engage with the bundles and use them in their classes have a good way and have multiple ways to ensure that the students engage with the content. As well, we have a feedback form. So we are constantly asking for feedback on the content of the bundle and its application um, as well. So currently we have a number of completed bundles. We have uh, the First Peoples and Overview, which is just that, an overview. It, it looks at language around um, the using of the term Indian versus using the term Indigenous. Uh, it also looks at worldview. We also have one on identity formation in the Canadian context. We have engaging with Indigenous communities that is used uh, and, it, and it elaborates on ways and understanding how one might want to do research and how one might engage with an Indigenous community if one wanted to do that research. We also have one on Indigenous environmental relations, Indigenous Canada relations, and as well uh, an introduction to the Métis people and the Métis nation. We also have one on cultural conceptions of the life cycle, the Inuit story. We have one on maternal and child health, determinants of health, and Indigenous law and conceptions of human rights. So you can see there's a wide variety and these are applied across disciplines. So I'm going to spend a few minutes now uh, just sharing some information about the resources uh, that were necessary to make this project happen. I'm also going to share some details about process, so process for creating a bundle, also process for uh, inter integrating a bundle into a course, and then finally I'll share some details about how this project is going. Uh, so first, institutional resources. One of the key pieces here is university support. Uh, so from the outset, I know um, when Gaudet first had this idea uh, for a uh, 
a bundle of knowledge um, and shared this with the university administration, this was met with support. Um, this also was uh, accompanied by financial support, which on the next slide I'll share uh, shortly some more information about. Um, the other uh, important aspect uh, to note here is um, once bundles became available at Carleton, uh, we saw a willingness from faculty to engage in conversation and really meaningfully integrate the bundles into their courses. Um, so Gohande mentioned that this is a collaborative project and uh, we've seen collaboration from instructors in engaging in the bundles in a way that is respectful and careful um, and really mindful uh, to make it relevant to the students' learning experiences. So uh, that's been really exciting for us to see. Uh, the other aspect to institutional resources that would be important to uh, point out uh, is instructional design. So we have an instructional designer who spends about 50% of her workload on the bundles project and that really looks like her taking video recordings of the lectures and knowledge keeper interviews and putting those into our learning management system in a way that is accessible, um, that also meets kind of the goals and um, vision that the collaborator had for the uh, bundle experience and then also uh, making that a um, uh, good learning experience for students in an online format. And then we also have technical expertise when it comes to the filming and editing of the videos for the bundles. Um, so that's provided by Carleton's Media Production Center. And we're very grateful for the expertise that they provide on that end. So I mentioned financial support. So um, this gives you an idea of a budget for building six bundles. So it's just over $50,000. Um, and I should note that we have figured out how to stretch this budget uh, by creating or building more bundles within one budget window. Um, but I think it's also really important to note that there's certain areas that uh, we won't cut corners around. One of the key ones being the honorarium that goes to the collaborators and the knowledge keepers that are gifting their knowledge to this project. Um, other kind of uh, considerations would be for accessibility, captioning, and we also have a fabulous research assistant who we, re we rely on and um, won't be cutting corners on that type of thing. So next, process. So uh, the process for preparing a bundle. So first, Gohande is the person who would um, engage with someone who uh, would be a good expert uh, to, to collaborate on uh, building a new bundle. Uh, and then we usually have kind of a kickoff meeting. And in that first meeting, uh, we talk about timeline. So we've actually built out a timeline uh, sheet and we just kind of discuss what's a reasonable timeline for you. These are kind of the things that we need. Um, and then we also kind of ask them, because usually the people we work with are very busy um, and we wanna be mindful that what we're asking of them is reasonable for them to get done in a certain timeline. So we all just kind of get on the same page about that, so know what to expect from uh, both sides. Then we also uh, have a worksheet that we call our bundle outline. And this document helps us really uh, get on the same page about what the goals for this bundle is and uh, gives us an idea from the collaborator on what they hope that students will know and be able to do by the end of engaging with the bundle. And this really helps our um, instructional designer be able to take their knowledge and ideas and put that into an online space. Uh, we also have a PowerPoint template and a support site to send the collaborators to for additional support. And of course, we're always available and having regular meetings. Now we have two other forms that I think are important to note. One is the consent form and the other is the honorarium form. And the consent form is unique to uh, the bundles project and it has specific language around how the videos for the bundle project will be used and how they will not be used. So the indigenous knowledge that is um, uh, shared with this project is not for sale. Um, and we make it very clear that we will not share the videos outside of the Carlton community. Um, and then the honorarium form, of course, um, to, to pay the collaborator and knowledge keeper for their work. And then the process for an instructor who's interested in incorporating a bundle into their course. So first they go to a central website and we have an intake form there that they would fill out. Those intake forms go to myself and the instructional designer on the project. And then we enroll them into a course in our learning management system that contains all the bundles. And they go through that course and um, decide which one or two bundles they'd like to incorporate into their course. 
And then we set up a meeting to uh, import that bundle into their course. And during this meeting, um, we have a very intentional conversation about the areas in the bundle that are really important for the instructor to customize to make the experience for the students with the bundle relevant to the course content and course subject matter. Then we also uh, take some time to point out the areas of the bundle that should not be customized. So the bundle part um, that has been intentionally designed. So Kohande mentioned there's the 40 minute lecture and the knowledge keeper and these pieces need to be experienced in full by the students and we make sure that we point this out to respect the knowledge that has been gifted to this project. So then finally, impact. So in fall 2020, so this semester, we've had 38 courses that have incorporated a bundle. So that will reach approximately 2,000 students. And last year, uh, in the academic year, there was 105 uh, courses that incorporated a bundle. And so that meant that over 4,600 students engaged with the bundle. That's pretty exciting. And then the next two slides, um, we just wanted to give you an idea of the different disciplines that have been engaging with this, these bundles. So this is our arts and social science uh, faculty, so you get a bit of an idea there. And then these are our four other faculties. So you can see really across the board, um, the bundles have been incorporated. And that's it for me, I'll hand it over to you, Gahande. One of the most important things to consider in this project and what makes it um, unique is that the faculty that use the bundles in their courses are tasked with engaging with the content first and learning it, learning about it. And they are the ones that actively have to work at bridging the content of their course and the content of the bundle. And so that becomes too part of the collaboration process where they begin to learn and understand more about Indigenous peoples from the, in these areas and are better able to speak to this, these topics um, as they engage with it in their courses. So as we uh, think through the final things uh, that might make this a possibility at your institutions, um, one of them is the, the idea of pro the, the Indigenous-led project leadership. This is really crucial, really important. Um, it keeps uh, an Indigenous focus an Indigenous perspective on bringing this knowledge into the classroom. So it would be about drawing on uh, community and drawing on um, your Indigenous faculty and staff to assist and bring forward this, this kind of project in your institution. Um, we don't have a set formula for you. This is not meant to be a be all end all solution. But what's important for you to consider as you design your own projects is that it's important to engage with the local Indigenous communities in the process and also in the outcomes and as well to make it relevant to the local communities and the institution where you are situated. So it's about building your own community and your own relationships within and outside of the institution that you are working in. And finally, I'd like to leave you this, with this one thought about what it means to decolonize the class. So this is um, a push and an encouragement towards thinking outside the box and being creative as you consider Indigenous pedagogy and as you consider other ways of bringing uh, important Indigenous knowledge into the classroom so that you too begin to build a sense of uh, a community in your institution. So Nyawakoa, and thank you so much for joining us today.